What's going on guys? You're with another epic video. Today guys I'm going to be going breaking down my epic uh, Scarclaw, Shratai Law, um, basically deck profile. I'm going to go in through and breaking down uh, the entire deck and go in through any, uh, any questions you may have, things like that. If anything that may happen to not answer, please comment down below. If you guys are not yet subscribed, please get, get subscribed to the channel. Uh, and also make sure you guys click the notification bell. As you can tell, only 16% of our viewers uh, have all notifications turned on. Uh, so make sure we get every, get uh, get those up, guys. I definitely would appreciate it. Also, you can see 63% uh, of our viewers are not subscribed to the channel. Definitely consider subscribing, guys. We're doing the ultimate Yu-Gi-Oh giveaway once we hit 1,000 subscribers, which is over $700 worth of Yu-Gi-Oh cards. The grand prize winner will get the $700 cards of uh, pulled out from all of my unboxing videos. I've got the video posted on my channel if you want to check that out. I'll also link it in the upper right hand. Uh, corner as well, and then also there'll be two follow-up winners that will win a booster box uh, as well at that time. Plus the main winner, the ultimate winner, will get a booster box as well. Uh, too. With that being said, guys, let's go ahead and dive in and get the party started. Uh, so first, I want to just want to kind of break down why I think this deck is uh, going to be uh, tier one. It's going to be definitely a, a meta contender in my personal opinion. Uh, the number one of the reasons would be, guys, is the deck has. Uh, 20 inherent summon monsters. So you're in, what inherent summon is you're not familiar with. Basically, it's a uh, summon that can't be negated or your opponent can't respond to you in chain. Essentially, uh, is the basic version of that. So what are our 20 inherent summon monster cards? It's all of our skull, scar claw monsters. So Balone, Astro, Acro, uh, Rich Heart, and then also our uh, Shratai Law monsters. All of these guys are inherent summons as well. So. That's the majority of our deck. You can see it's about half our deck are inherent summons. So it's what makes the deck so insane. One. Uh, two, the Chartala monster cards give you access to much knowledge. So, for example, uh, Unicorn lets me see I can, uh, that my opponent activates a spell or monster card effect. I can look at the their entire extra deck, uh, the entire 15 cards. So I know in their entire deck, extra deck, so I know what deck they're playing. Uh, and I also can remove it, uh, banish one face down. Uh the Fenir basically is a Rota. It allows me to pull one of the three back to my hand as well. It also lets me, if they activate a spell or monster card effect, I can banish a card on the field. Uh, the Org lets me go through and add the Trap card to my hand. And his other effect is if you act, my opponent activates a spell or monster card effect, I can look at the top five cards of my opponent's deck, pick one, banish it. And they go back in the same order. I also forgot to mention the Unicorn also pulls the spell card. Uh, what the spell card does, guys, is it allows me to normal summon one uh, without tributing for the level sevens. Uh, and also allows me to bring one back to you from the graveyard or remove from play. Uh, the trap basically does about the same, except the only difference it lets you do remove from play, and it also lets you do from the uh, hand as well. Uh, so yeah. Also too, this one lets you look at your hand. The trap will let you look at your opponent. If they activate a uh, basically a spell or trap card, uh, you can look at your opponent's hand, and I can banish one card from their hand. So you get to see, you get full knowledge. You get their extra deck, their five cards in their top deck. Uh, banish a card on the field, banish a card from their hand, and banish up to three cards from their graveyard. So it's insane. You're getting all of that knowledge with the Chateau La monster cards archetyped in here. So that's giving us all that insider knowledge, plus the in inherent summon advantage as well too. Plus you're just plussing so much off of this deck, uh, which you'll get more into that as we go through the... Uh, the deck profile itself. So basically, we'll, we'll go and run through the profile, guys, but I just wanted to kind of explain why I'm using the deck. Uh, so we're going to use in the three balloon. This one lets you do piercing damage. So how the Scarclaw monster wants uh, work, guys, is uh, they can be special summoned from your hand once per turn. Uh, so they are they are hard once per turn. So once you so you could normal summon one, and then I could like if I draw two balloon or or any of these guys, the Scarclaw, right? I could summon one, the special summon the other. That's perfectly fine. Uh, when you special summon, then make sure you always put them in defense, so that way when you get the rich heart out later on, if there's three cards in defense, not only can you pick one of your Scarclaw spell or traps to add from your deck to your hand, you can also draw an additional card, so you're plussing two cards off of this as well if there's three cards in defense. So that's why it's very important when you special summon these out, you always put them in defense. Then they have no attack, so that that would be another good reason you don't want them in attack mode. Uh, <laughs> for obvious reasons, but Balone does... Uh, he gives your main monster, your Triheart, uh, piercing damage. Uh, Astro gives, the, this allows me to attack up to the times of I have Scar Club monsters on the field. So as you can see, there's four different ones. So he can do up to four attack guys. And he gets up to, I think it's like, what, 56, 5,600 regularly. 
uh, pretty easily. So it's very easy to get him up to 56 because the other one, Acro, gives him 300 uh, additional attack points for all the monsters in defense. So he's gaining monsters for in defense. We already covered the rich art. Um, we'll go over the rest of the monster cards, and then we'll get into the spells next. So I am running the rescue cat package also with the uh, Bambi over here that I refer to, <laughs> uh, the mystical beast of the forest, uh, just so we can go into Naturi Beast. So if you don't want to play Naturi Beast, you know you can take the, you know you can take Bambi out if you want to. That's perfectly fine. We are running two alphas. I feel like three is too much for the deck. I feel it's balanced perfectly at two. I, I've never had any issues. Of drawing, you know, both in hand or drawing them too much continuously. So you want to see them, but you don't want to see them too much, right? So two of them, I feel like, is still a right fit for this deck. So this way you can bounce them back. And remember, all of your Scarclaw monsters are beast, so you could bounce up a lot of cards back on your opponent's side of the field, whether you're going first or second. It's a really good card. Uh, and plus, you can resummon it again if they still have more cards than you, and use it as an extender to go into your Tryheart or your Blossom or you know whatever you need to go into. So you could use it still as an extender. Uh, as well. We do run the Parallel Exceed Package just as a uh, more extenders. I do run two Vista Starfrost. Uh, I'm debating on taking maybe one of them out. I'm going to do a different version mixed with the Tri Brigade that's very similar to the version that I'm running here. And then I think I'll make another version too with this just incorporated with Tri Brigade. So like I'll experiment with that. But so far this deck's been really insane and it's done very, very well. Um, so we're running those. We've talked about them. So that's all the monster card, guys. So next we'll go into the spells. We'll just start at the top and then go down below. I'll list the deck profile down below in the comments as well. Um, and if you have any comments, make sure you post them down below. I'll also live stream uh, every Saturday and Sunday if you would like to see me play the deck live or play against the deck live. Maybe you don't think the deck is good. You're more than welcome to uh, come in and play against it and get you know and all that good stuff. Uh, so next we're running the Gravity Balance, which is a really good card. Uh, so basically what this does is it allows you to target two Earth Monsters, which majority of our deck is nothing but Earth Monsters, so it's very easy for us to do. But they need to be two of the same monsters, so it could be two of your same Scarclaw Monsters. Uh, it could also even be two of your uh, uh, Nefares, uh, two of them, bring them back as well, so it could be two of them, either or. Uh, and they, basically their effects are negated and their attack and defense is changed to zero. Uh, also, it's got another side effect as well if our G-Golem monster card, which will be our Link monster that we'll get to later on, so just keep that in mind for later. Uh, happen to be destroyed by battle or card effect, I can remove this card from the graveyard uh, instead and ban banish the spell to keep him alive on the field. You'll see why that's in, uh, even crazier here in a little bit. Um, so, right, so we've got uh, Straddle. Straddle's very good, guys, because this one allows you to negate anything that targets your Scarclaw monster, so maybe they're trying to use, like, uh, Valor... Or something like that. Usually I get Valored a lot. They're trying to use Valor on certain stuff. Like they're trying Valor like the Rich Art. So if they try and Valor the Rich Art, negate it. This is perfect. This is perfect. Uh, good, perfectly good for that. So I can negate the Valor. So that way I can plus two off of him. So we, uh, we pretty much probably would negate that almost every time. The next one too that you don't see a lot of people talk about. And that's another reason why I play two of them. Uh, is for this specific reason. Because the other one too. Uh, you get to gain their attack and defense points. Of your opponent's monster. So I can use it on my main monster. Like, like I said, it's usually around already 5,600. Use this to gain the attack of their monster. It's already 2, you know, 2,000 or 3,000, whatever. And now he's like a, you know, 76 or 8K plus. Uh, and then if I've already got the other stuff on him, like this piercing damage and multiple attacks, that's game. I just have to attack like one card probably or two at most, that's game. Uh, very quick. It's a very quick to turn into an OTK deck instantly. Um, not considering he already gets the multiple attacks with this guy. The field spell for this deck is insane, guys. It's probably one of the best field spells in the entire game because this allows you, it's a, it's a reinforcement of the army, allows you to pull any of your Scarclaw monsters to your hand or Vista Starfrost. Also, uh, your opponent's monsters lose 100 attack and defense points for each monster card in defense mode. Uh, so they're losing a, uh, you know, a little bit of attack and defense, but it adds up over time. Also, if there's three or more cards in defense, uh, whether it could be your opponent's side or your side, just to total together overall three or more. I can target one card in the field, destroy whether it be monster, spell, or trap. You can pick, destroy it, bam, gone. Uh, so that's really good. Then you've got the rival. Basically, it's your reborn the monster. Also, if you happen to, like, your your uh, tryheart will be destroyed by battle or by card effect, you can remove it from play to keep from being destroyed by battle or card effect. So that's really insane. Uh, you've got Decline that's really good as well. I've just started running this not too long ago. Basically, I can target the field spell that's on the field or in the graveyard, turn it back to my hand, 
and then um, and I can replay the field spell if I haven't played it this turn, so I could just redo it again. So I'm plusing off that as well. And then also I could remove from play this same turn, and then add one of the uh, Scarclaw monsters from my graveyard back to my hand. Or if maybe I need to return one of the Trihearts in my graveyard from the graveyard back to the extra deck, I could do that as well if needed. Uh, we're running the classic talents because you play through negates. It's very easy to play through negates with this deck, guys, because you're not doing anything that's right. All your inherent summons, so it's not doing anything. So it's very easy for you to play through, you know, Defloor, Chi Chow, stuff like that. Those are horrible boards against this deck. They're not going to do anything with a Chi Chow and Defloor. That, that's that, that's trash against this deck. Uh, so it's very easy. A lot of people will try and, you know, when you use his effect to use like Chi Chow to negate it, destroy it. He's not affected by that. We'll get more into that a little bit while later. So it's very easy for you to pop off like Talons or stuff like that, or they've already tried to use some sort of hand trap at this point. So it's very easy for you to plus the two or whatever you want to do with it. Call by the Grave to stop their hand traps. Reinforcement of the Army to pull the Rich Heart because you combo so hard off it. I hate back row cards, as you guys know. So we have the, the Duster and the Lightning Storm. If you can't afford a Lightning Storm or don't have one, just swap it out for a Twin Twister or a Raigeki. Uh, the Prime uh, Remus map. This one's really good, so you can pull any of your Scarclaw monsters from your deck to your hand. You do have to pay half your life points. That's never been a problem for me, so don't worry about that. Just make sure you're you know, playing rest of your plays and combos correctly, and it's, it shouldn't be an issue for you. Uh, but that usually allows me to pop off very hard and gives me the extra extender I need to basically usually win the game, uh, usually on my second turn, uh, if I'm going first, for example. Or maybe even win first turn if I'm going second. Uh, so just kind of keep that in mind. You have to activate it first. Um, so the next one playing is Standard Monster Born, Extender Reasoning, Extender Plus Put Stuff in the Grave. Uh, and we, um, So now we'll go into the extra deck, guys. So the Triheart's so good because right, he puts everything in defense. So everything uh, other than Link Monsters, so all they can do is attack us with Link Monsters. I can special summon one of my three lower monsters back from the graveyard. And then add another uh, Scarclaw monster. Could be one of the fours or one of the threes from my deck to my hand, so that allows you to keep extending. Uh, really good there. The level 1, basically, you can link one of these guys off. Usually, you're going to do the one you put in attack mode, link it off, and then you can add the field spell to your hand, play the field spell, plus one off another monster. Uh, then you've got your standard uh, Amirage, just in case maybe you're get, uh, maybe you going for the Parallel Exceed play, Normal Summon, uh, you know, link off, go into that. Maybe, maybe not, depending on what you have. Uh, you know, Maybe they call by the Grave that or something last turn, and then... Uh, you know, call by the grave or something like that, then you would have to go into that or something. Um, or Phoenix. So Phoenix is good to get rid of back row cards. Also to try and keep your uh, him from being destroyed by battle with the co-linked effect. IP for obvious reasons, so we can keep our Triheart from being destroyed by card effects. Even more insane. Deflora to negate Nibiru and disruptions. Nitri Beast to negate spells. Uh, Blossom as an extender. Underworld Goddess to get rid of like uh, Arva Maxer and stuff like that. That's OP. That's on their side of the field that you can't just, you know, run over with this deck. Because you can run over just about anything because your, your monster is 5,600 attack. That's going to run through, like, you know, 99% of the cards in the game. Nabuska for offensive and defensive reasons to negate all their card effects and put everything in defense. So they're double in defense. So even if you get hit with a Kaiju, you, one of the other ones is still protecting you. Uh, number 75 to protect against Nibiru and stuff like that. So that way if they Nibiru you, you know, remove the two draw a card, go about your day, and then go into, you know, go into try hard or whatever you're doing next. Um, next, the uh, G Golem card that we talked about previously that we, we would come back to. This card's insane. So what it allows you to do, your co-link monsters are unaffected by monster effects. So this way you can keep them from getting affected, because a lot of people have I've started doing, like Pat banished him earlier on. Uh, but if I get him out, which I did a little bit through the, uh, the stream earlier today, uh, that way he can't be targeted. So he can't. You, there's nothing you can do. Uh, whether he's targeted or not. Uh, so basically, cloning monsters aren't affected by your monster effects. Your opponent on the, activates on the field, which is really good because it doesn't say target. I love it. It just says activated effects. So that, that's insanely good. Your opponent monsters must attack this card. So if he happens to get into the access code, the Bora Sword, you know, whatever it is, they're forced to attack the G Golem. And remember what we talked about, right? If this gravity balance is in the graveyard, when they go to attack him, I just remove it from play. So he's still on the field. So that means he's forced to attack again with another Link monster, or if it's Bora Sword, attack again. Uh, and go for that. So, it's ba basically they're not getting to him, long story short. So best they get rid of him off the field, I still have the rest of my full board, and it goes to my turn, and we're, we're good to go. Uh, and then if you have Cyberverse cards, guys, in here you can discard a card and draw a card off of it too. Uh, so that's really good as well. So I've thought about trying to mix some of the Cyberverse and see if I can do anything with them as well. Uh, and then you guys can see my uh, extra deck... 
I run just the two nibs, just in case we need their crazy combo and or it's a mirror match. The kaiju, in case it's, uh, you know, for, for Florida Lees. Valor for, like we talked about before, it could be specific monsters, but usually it's four or more of the link monsters. Get them out of the way. Uh, Dweller, because so much stuff targets the graveyard. And Zeus, just because of Zeus, you want to get rid of some stuff that's crazy that may be like a tower or something you can't overpower. Um, you know, like we talked about before, like the Arvamax or something like that. And Zeus is good for that. Uh, but that's basically my deck in a nutshell, guys. Like I said, I'll list the deck down below in the pro uh, the comments. Remember, if you're not yet subscribed, please consider subscribing. Help us get to that 1,000 subscribers so we can do the ultimate giveaway. And also, I can announce to you guys uh, some of the things I've been working on the scenes and the ideas I've come up with uh, new series that we're going to be starting on the channel once we hit 1,000 subscribers. I'll reveal that at the time that we hit the 1,000 subs that you guys are going to love and definitely want to be a part of the channel and you want to make sure you're there. So make sure you hit the notification bell if you haven't already. Make sure you guys are subscribed, like the video. Uh, that'll do it for this one, guys. I appreciate your love and support, and I'll see you in the next one.